I want to bring on my guest today, live from Switzerland, uh, Thomas Hon Sparborth. But again, just to underscore this point for those who maybe haven't been investing in um, commodities, agriculture, ag tech in the past. So they might not make the connection that there's an economic transformation accompanying climate change and the changes in our planet. Can you make that case for people so they understand why economics and our economy would be shifted due to, let's say, climate change? Of course. Uh, look, if you look at our major systems today. If you look at the energy system, $10 trillion in value, the food system around $15 trillion, uh, the material system, $5 trillion. Mm. All of those today are go undergoing pretty profound transformations, partially because we're simply developing new solutions that deliver on the same basic utility functions of those systems in a better way. We're developing better ways to provide ourselves with energy. We're providing better ways of providing nutrients, we're providing better materials. We're seeing breakthrough technologies that are more environmentally efficient, but they're usually more environmentally efficient because they're more resource efficient. Mm -hmm. They use resources in terms of fossil fuels or land and water. And whenever you're more resource efficient, you tend to be more economically efficient. And that creates an investment case for some of these solutions. They tend to require upfront capex deployment, but tend to give you OPEX savings, and that makes them attractive to us. Mm -hmm. And I would say in this particular case, it's twofold. So one might say, oh, there's more efficiency in going from the horse and buggy to the car. Therefore, there's an opportunity for wealth growth. We talk a lot about it a lot on this podcast. You're not seeing real wealth creation because a company upped their revenue by 3%. You're seeing wealth creation because you've had a, an enormous secular trend switching over from, let's say, developing your film at something we have in the United States called Walgreens, where it might take five days to get your film and then 50% of the pictures are no good and you've paid for all of it and upgrading to, let's say, a digital film system. But those two examples are optional. Nothing was going to happen if we kept paying for bad photos, whereas we're not in a situation that is optional today. So as we go from 8 billion people on the planet to 10 billion people, but you're not getting more land and you're not getting more water, if you have a food system that is inefficient, it's not just an economic model that we can participate in to capitalize on being more efficient. It's that you're going to start having severe political problems, um, insecurity, wars. I, I do believe wars will be fought over food and water. So we find ourselves in a bind, not just to innovate, but to innovate quickly 